The island nation of the Bahamas has been one of the most well-known countries in the world for tourism, for cruises, for banking. And now the government is talking about possibly rolling out what could be one of the most interesting citizenship by investment programs offered anywhere in the world. I'm going to share with you the latest headlines and my feedback on a potential Bahamas citizenship program. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson, and here at Nomad Capitalist, myself, my team, and our global network help seven- and eight-figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. Let's dive into a little bit of speculation on a potential new citizenship program that may not be quite as easy to come about as you might think. This headline from the Nassau Guardian in the Bahamas, I'm going to read the article to you from early December 2020, uh, and then I'm going to share with you my thoughts both on the Bahamas citizenship in general and on this particular program. The NASA Guardian says, the government is looking at the possibility of offering citizenship by investment to foreigners, the Minister of Financial Services, Trade and Industry and Immigration, Ellsworth Johnson, said. He told reporters outside the Churchill building that while he can't speak much about it, it is something the government is looking at for the Bahamas while seeing whether it worked for other countries. He said, some countries, when we do our comparative analysis, have had a bad experience from it, Johnson said. But it is something that we are looking at. No decisions have been made, and I don't want to speak directly to it. Certainly there are some countries, I suppose, in Europe. Albania talked about coming off the program. The EU basically said, if you do that, you're dead to us. Uh, Moldova canceled their program uh, after the EU threatened uh, to pull aid to the country. Uh, Cyprus canceled its program after allegations or pretty clear evidence, I suppose, of uh, some irregularities with the program and the fact that the EU was pressuring them. As to Caribbean countries, I feel like while the Caribbean countries do have the occasional push or pull from someone else, they've all used the funds relatively effectively, despite what opposition parties might say, to build up their economies. So I don't know that countries have had such a bad experience uh, with it, but certainly they are studying it. Now, Johnson's comments came as he was being asked to clarify if he was speaking to citizenship by investment, as he went into detail for the Bahamas to get more bang for its buck, he said, with people coming into the country to work and reside. What people may be familiar with, if you've looked at the Bahamas as a place to live, is there is a residence program where the more money you spend on real estate, you can live in the country. You buy a house, and depending on how expensive that house is, your, your application for residence is appropriately fast-tracked. So uh, I think half a million dollars and a million dollars are two of the benchmarks. And so you can get residence pretty quickly. You've got a great, uh, very tax-friendly country. Obviously, for many people, a beautiful country. We, we last you know, thought about it here when, when we heard the news about Sean Connery earlier this year, you know, passing away in the Bahamas. Certainly not a bad place to be. And so residence has always been a possibility, but it's been one of the many tax-friendly countries like Monaco, like Singapore, like so many others, where citizenship has always been a much more dicey affair. Now the government's saying, let's get more bang for our buck. He continued, but I'll tell you there are any number of conglomerates or companies in the Bahamas who've been making the approaches to us at the ministry saying, listen, can we have a discussion on this? Citizenship by investment is the process uh, where uh, citizenship is conferred on an individual much faster than the traditional immigration process. True. Some countries that currently offer it include Germany, Portugal, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, Spain, and Malta. False. This is where the media, if the media is the arbiter of this, then we're in big trouble because Germany, Portugal, Spain uh, do not have citizenship by investment programs. Germany, I suppose, has a residence by investment program. Uh, Portugal and Spain do, and they can lead to citizenship by fulfilling certain criteria. Some cases you have to live there. Not so much in the case of Portugal, but in many of these countries you have to live there. Citizenship by investment is you make an investment, you make a donation. It's generally not buying, at least in the case of the Caribbean, not buying property on the open market. You want to buy real estate in St. Lucia, you're probably going to be overpaying. Dominica, St. Kitts, etc. You're going to be buying something that's a timeshare or that's a fractional unit, or you're going to be paying a lot more than the minimum. And so generally it's a donation in the case of the Caribbean. St. Lucia has a bond option. Other countries have some other relatively uh, hum-ho options. Uh, but this is one story that the media always gets incorrect. Which countries have citizenship by investment? And then they try and conflate that the Bahamas with its residence program where you buy any piece of real estate is how it would function under a citizenship by investment program. 
Turkey did follow that with some caveats. Most countries don't. They limit where you have to buy property, specifically because you have people coming to the government, for example, in Turkey, saying, we can't sell our properties. Uh, so the government rolled out this uh, a couple years ago, lower priced real estate citizenship by investment, where it was designed to benefit property developers. You don't have to buy from them. We've have specialized in helping some people buy great value properties that aren't overpriced. But perhaps the Bahamas would follow a similar route. Currently, there's no such program in the Bahamas, leaving foreigners to go through the traditional work permit or permanent residency, again, through real estate. And so the article uh, continues. What came out immediately after these comments was uh, you know, other people in the government saying, no way, no how. We have people who are born here, sometimes even with one Bahamian parent. They're having trouble getting citizenship. We're not going to give away our sacred birthright, the typical thing that you see in these islands where uh, one party's for it and the other party's against it, and they just squabble over it. And you know, if you're living in the U.S. or Canada or Australia, certainly you're talking about immigration, the political discourse, but you probably aren't talking about you know, citizenship by investment, which generally favors small countries, right? I mean, if the U.S. got a $100,000 donation or a million dollar or even a $10 million donation to be a citizen, it wouldn't put a dent in anything, whereas in the Bahamas, it would. Now, here's what makes the Bahamas interesting. I think that there's going to be a, an uphill battle on this, but you do see more countries coming out and at least talk about it. You know, I think, as you've seen, you know, countries like Moldova pulled their programs back. I think not every country quite knows what they're getting into. They love the idea, especially this year, of raising revenue. They love the idea of being more open. Uh, I think a country like the Bahamas perhaps avoids the problems of being at Europe's doorstep, but you know, they have a better reputation than a lot of countries in that region, whether it's in the banking space, the business space, um, for all things offshore. Uh, they've had a better reputation than the Belize's, for example. Um, and so to maintain that, uh, I think that they have to look seriously at what they're going to do with this. Now, the benefits of a Bahamas passport versus, say, St. Lucia, one that I've done, is the Bahamas, you have visa-free access to Canada. You have conditional visa-free access to the United States, which only Malta has, that would be a total game changer. Generally speaking, uh, as I understand, you have to go into the U.S. from Nassau. They actually have a pre-clearance facility where you pre-clear uh, Customs and Border Patrol in Nassau, same as I've done in Ireland, and I guess they've opened up a, num a number of places around the world that have this pre-clearance. You basically land in the U.S. as if it's domestic flight. Uh, and so how does the U.S. respond to this? I think we have a little bit of, of, of past data uh, when there was a country that, that offered citizenship. And the U.S. said, if you are a citizen by investment, you're not eligible. Or perhaps the U.S. just goes and punishes the Bahamas overall. So that's going to be a very dicey thing when you've got a country like the United States where your citizens can enter with a couple of conditions. Uh, obviously, the Bahamas is right at the U.S. doorstep. Uh, so that could be a great benefit. But I highly doubt that the U.S. is just going to sit back and let a bunch of uh, people from uh, Iraq and Russia and China just you know go and make a half million dollar donation and, and come into the U.S. Uh, without a visa. Uh, other countries the Bahamas has access to pretty standard visa-free travel in Europe. Uh, not so great visa-free travel actually in South America, which is odd compared to let's say in Antigua or a St. Kitts. Uh, they do have access to China, to Japan, to the UAE. So they've done a good job of building relations with larger countries that you might want to visit. So, you know, China, the only country in the Caribbean that allows you to get in there that where the, the, the citizenship is available is Grenada. Is that something where it's so difficult to get a Chinese visa that you're going to spend more for that access? Yeah, perhaps not, but it just shows you the profile of the country, uh, that it's a country that does have relations with big countries and it's not the standard uh, Caribbean citizenship by investment. Uh, and so this would certainly be a very interesting program, but one that if you're looking for a bargain, I would not expect it from here. Uh, the fact that you have Canada, the fact that you have the U.S. We haven't seen a Caribbean citizenship by investment program have that level of, level of access since the price wars of 2017 and then more recently uh, started. You used to have visa-free access to Canada from Antigua, before that from St. Kitts. That was back when those programs were more expensive in, their, in the case of Antigua in its infancy. Uh, and so I think that if the Bahamas follows the same route, uh, they may try and command a premium at first. And again, I, I wonder whether uh, Canada will pull their visa-free access. I think that you know, getting visa-free access from a Caribbean citizenship by investment to the U.S., to Canada, to Australia uh, is going to be difficult. You can get the U.K., you can get Ireland, you can get Europe, you can get, in this case, the UAE and China and Japan and a lot of the other countries that you might want. 
Uh, but I think that you'll probably see a much more expensive offering. Perhaps they would do something like Malta where it's a donation. Maybe it's $300,000 donation, plus you have to buy real estate to have some kind of genuine link. Maybe you have to live there for a certain number of days a year, something that I think some CBI programs might start to do more of in the future. So who knows? I've said for a couple of years now, I think you're going to see more of a hybrid approach from some of these new programs. Montenegro came out, same donation that you'd make in the Caribbean, plus you have to buy some really overpriced real estate. That's an example of a hybrid. The Bahamas might do that. So you're not going to find a bargain. You might temporarily get some better visa-free access, and you might hope and you might cling to dear life for the idea that that would stay. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Not opposed to the program, but I think we've seen a history when countries with interesting passports, as the Bahamas has, uh, they overpriced their program, just as Turkey did when they tried to get a million dollar real estate investment back a couple of years ago. They had to pull it back to 250. I think as much as people like the idea of the Bahamas, they like the clean image, they like the proximity to the U.S., I think that the marketplace doesn't value those things as much as perhaps the country wants to. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see what happens if they go through with this. Far from certain that they will, that's my feedback if they do. How can Nomad Capitalists help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.